What if I told you that inside your body right now, you have a built-in system designed to interact with cannabis? Not to get you high, but to help regulate pain, sleep appetite, and even stop rogue cancer cells in their tracks. This isn't science fiction. It's a real and growing field of research that's been turning heads in the medical community. Cannabinoids, natural compounds found in cannabis, have shown an incredible ability in lab settings to target cancer cells while leaving healthy ones alone. That's right. They may actually cause cancer cells to self-destruct a process scientists call apoptosis. Even more remarkable, these compounds don't act like foreign invaders. Your body already has receptors for them called CB1 and CB2. These receptors are found in your brain immune system and even major organs like your liver and pancreas. That means your body was in some ways built to work with cannabinoids. So why don't we hear more about this? And what does it actually mean for people over 60, especially those navigating cancer, chronic pain, or sleep disorders? Let's explore the truth behind cannabis aging and health and what every senior should know today. It might sound surprising, but your body already knows how to respond to cannabis because it has its own internal system made for it. This system is called the endocannabinoid system, and it's been part of your biology since the day you were born. The endocannabinoid system is like your body's internal balancing act. It helps manage important functions like sleep mood, appetite, immune response, and even how your cells grow and die. Your body produces its own cannabinoids called endocannabinoids that work like keys fitting into special locks throughout your body. These locks are the cannabinoid receptors, CB1 mostly found in the brain and nervous system, and CB2 found in immune cells and major organs. What's fascinating is that the cannabinoids found in the cannabis plant, like THC and CBD, can fit into these same locks. When they do, they help support or influence the body's natural healing process. That's why some people experience pain relief, better sleep-reduced inflammation, or improved mood after using medical cannabis. And for seniors especially, this is significant. As we age, our body produces fewer endocannabinoids, which may explain increases in inflammation pain or trouble sleeping. Natural cannabinoids from cannabis may help restore that balance gently using the system your body already understands. This isn't about getting high. It's about giving your body the tools it may already be asking for tools designed by nature, recognized by science, and increasingly supported by personal stories of relief and recovery. Let's take a closer look at something truly mind-blowing how cannabis compounds may actually fight cancer cells. Inside every one of us, there are billions of cells doing their job every day. But sometimes things go wrong. A normal cell may start multiplying uncontrollably, turning into what we know as cancer. These cancer cells don't listen to the body's stop signals. They keep growing, spreading, and damaging healthy tissue. Here's where cannabinoids come in. When cannabinoids like THC and CBD enter the bloodstream, they begin searching for the right receptors, those same CB1 and CB2 locks. We talked about earlier. Now here's the twist. Cancer cells tend to have more of these receptors than healthy cells do. So cannabinoids are drawn to them more quickly and in greater numbers. Once inside a cancer cell, certain cannabinoids trigger a remarkable reaction called apoptosis, a kind of cellular self-destruct mode. Think of it like pushing a shutdown button from the inside. Instead of multiplying the cancer cell, is told to stop and die. Even better healthy cells are mostly unaffected. And it doesn't stop there. Studies have shown that cannabinoids may also reduce angiogenesis, which is the growth of new blood vessels that feed tumors. Without new blood flow, tumors struggle to grow. In addition, cannabinoids may limit metastasis, the ability of cancer cells to spread to other parts of the body. In laboratory tests, some cannabinoid compounds were able to kill nearly 100% of cancer cells in certain types of cell cultures. In animal studies, they reduced tumor sizes in mice by 25 to 30%, with the rest of the tumors shrinking significantly. Of course, this doesn't mean cannabis is a miracle cure, but the fact that it can cause cancer cells to die without harming surrounding healthy tissue is something researchers are paying close attention to. As science continues to study these effects, one thing is becoming clearer. Nature may have quietly offered us a tool to help the body defend itself, and it's been hidden in plain sight. You might be wondering if cannabis has this kind of effect on cancer cells, where's the official medical stamp of approval? That's where things get complicated. In the United States, 
Cannabis is still classified as a schedule. I drug the same category as heroin and LSD. This means that according to federal law, it has no accepted medical use and a high risk of abuse. But that classification has made it incredibly difficult for researchers to study it properly for decades. Despite the red tape studies are being done and the results are turning heads, a major study from 1999 found that cannabinoids may play a role in pain control immune function and even memory regulation. The same study noted that cannabis had low dependence potential and relatively few side effects compared to common medications like opioids. In fact, many of the side effects were positive, like better sleep improved digestion, reduced anxiety and relief from chronic pain. This is especially meaningful for seniors who may be juggling multiple medications, many of which come with difficult side effects. Cannabis-based drugs like dronabinol and nabilone are already FDA-approved not to treat cancer directly, but to relieve nausea, appetite loss, and pain related to chemotherapy. And researchers are currently working on new cannabis-derived treatments for nervous system and immune disorders. The truth is science is catching up with what many patients have already discovered that cannabis, when used responsibly and medically, can be a powerful tool for support not just in fighting disease, but in improving quality of life. Believe it or not, cannabis wasn't always controversial. In fact, it was once a respected part of medical practice used in tinctures, salves, and teas for everything from pain relief to digestive troubles. Back in the 1800s and early 1900s, cannabis was listed in the U.S., pharmacopoeia, and prescribed by doctors for a wide range of ailments. It was even part of Native American traditional medicine long before that. Many cultures around the world considered it a healing plant, not a danger. So what changed? In the mid-1900s, political pressures and shifting public attitudes led to a sweeping ban. In 1970, the Controlled Substances Act was passed, placing cannabis in the strictest legal category alongside the most dangerous narcotics. Suddenly, a plant once used in hospitals was labeled as having no medical value. That stigma stuck. And for decades, Cannabis research came to a standstill, despite mounting evidence that it could help patients with chronic pain epilepsy cancer and more. Today, that perception is slowly shifting. Over 30 U.S. states have legalized medical cannabis. Seniors are now among the fastest-growing groups of medical cannabis users, often turning to it for pain relief, sleep support, and cancer-related symptoms, especially when other medications have failed or caused side effects. Still, misunderstandings remain. Some people hear cannabis and think only of recreational drug use, but when used responsibly and under medical guidance, it's simply another natural tool in the wellness toolkit one with deep roots in medical history and growing support from science. Let's be honest, chemotherapy saves lives, but it often comes at a heavy cost. Many cancer patients, especially seniors, describe chemo as one of the hardest parts of treatment. Side effects can include hair loss, nausea, fatigue, nerve damage, poor appetite, memory issues, and even damage to healthy organs. These symptoms not only affect the body, but also the spirit. Daily life becomes exhausting. Eating becomes difficult. Sleep turns into a struggle. Now compare that to the potential side effects of medical cannabis. In clinical settings, patients have reported side effects like mild drowsiness, dry mouth, or changes in appetite, but also improved mood pain relief, better sleep, reduced anxiety, and a return of appetite. In fact, for many undergoing chemotherapy, cannabis is used to manage those very symptoms. Unlike opioids, which can cause dependency and harsh withdrawal, cannabinoids appear to carry low risk of addiction, especially in older adults, using them for medicinal purposes under supervision. Even more encouraging, cannabis doesn't damage healthy cells. Its action appears selective targeting only the dysfunctional or cancerous ones. That's something chemotherapy can't yet do. It kills good cells along with the bad. Of course, cannabis is not a one-size-fits-all solution. But for many older adults, it offers a gentler alternative or a supportive therapy alongside standard treatment. And when your quality of life matters just as much as the treatment itself, every option that offers relief without adding suffering deserves attention. If you've made it this far, you've heard something both hopeful and powerful. Your body has a natural system that responds to cannabis, and in some cases, that response may help fight disease, ease pain, or simply make life feel livable again. Cannabis isn't magic. It's not a cure-all. 
but it is a plant that's been misunderstood for decades now, slowly re-entering the world of medicine where it may belong. And for seniors facing difficult health decisions, especially those dealing with cancer, chronic pain, or sleep problems, it offers a path worth exploring. What matters most is your quality of life. If you or someone you love is navigating illness, consider speaking with a healthcare provider who understands medical cannabis. In many states, access is growing and more doctors are open to discussing it without judgment. You deserve comfort. You deserve options. And you deserve to know that science is on your side. Sometimes the most powerful healing tools don't come from the lab. They come from nature and from listening to your body's quiet wisdom.